In this video, we're going to introduce validity. So by the end of this video, you should be able to determine whether the following argument is valid using a truth table. So the solution video will be posted 24 hours after this video goes up. But let's start. A valid argument is any argument that follows logically from its premises, and it doesn't matter whether those premises are true or not. So I have one example argument here. The things above the lines are called premises, so we can think of this argument as having two premises. Premise one, number one and number two. Really shouldn't have the S on the end there. So premise one, premise two. And we have a conclusion underneath the bar. And we use this little symbol here. This is a symbol of a proof that tells us what our conclusion is. So this argument says all demons like peas, Laharl is a demon, therefore Laharl likes peas. So this is a valid argument because structurally the conclusion follows from the premises. But in this case, we don't know if this first line is true. We don't know if the second line is true. So when we talk about arguments, valid arguments that have true premises, we call those sound arguments. So that's when we know that the premise is true. So for instance, in this argument, all squares are shapes. Okay, this is premise number one. This is a true premise. All squares are in fact shapes. Uh, premise number two, all shapes can be drawn. Okay, that is also true. If we scale them down small enough, we can draw any single shape in the world, provided it's two-dimensional. Therefore, our conclusion, all squares can be drawn is true because all squares are shapes all shapes can be drawn therefore all squares can be drawn so it's valid because of the structure we know that the premises entail the conclusion and it's also sound because in this case our premises are true premise number one is true and premise number two is true so that's the difference between a sound and a valid argument now, in a logic course, we don't care too much about soundness. It's more so about just working with valid arguments. So that way, we can apply these to real things in the real world. And then in the real world, we care about soundness. But mathematically, we don't care too much about it. So let's suppose we have the following argument. Uh, two premises and a conclusion. Uh, we have alpha, that's premise number one. We have alpha arrow beta, that's premise number two. And then we have our conclusion beta. So if this argument is valid, this means that if we have alpha and we have alpha arrow beta, we get beta. So we can think of this as saying that alpha and alpha arrow beta, arrow beta is a tautology. What that means is that if the premises are true, so if alpha is true and alpha arrow beta is true, then it must be the case that beta is true. If beta is false in that case, it is not valid. If our premises are true, then our conclusion should also be true. So one arrow one should happen, or zero arrow one or zero arrow zero. We should never, never have one arrow zero. Another way of saying this is that alpha and alpha arrow beta entails beta. This is another word for that. So we need to check with our truth table to see if this is a valid argument. So I'm gonna clear this up a little bit, just so that way it's not too crowded on our screen. But we need to show that this argument is a tautology. So this row right here, or this column with our conditional, that's our main connective, should be a tautology if this is valid. So let's do our truth tables and I will go through this a little bit quickly because we've done these so many times already. Uh, alpha, arrow, beta, this will be true in rows 1, 3, and 4, because we have 1, arrow, 1, 0, arrow, 1, 0, arrow, 0. It'll be false in row 2, 1, arrow, 0. That's the only time it's false. Uh, with the and here, we're taking information from alpha, information from alpha, arrow, beta. So those both have to be true. So 1, 1 in the first row, that's true. Uh, 1, 0 in the second row, that's false. 0, 1 in the third row, that's false. 0, 1 in the fourth row, that is false. Okay. So we just have one more step to go. We just have to do the arrow here. And the arrow is going to take information from uh, this column. So the and for alpha and alpha arrow beta. And it's going to take information from beta. So it's only false if we have one arrow zero. 
So the first column, or the first row, we have one arrow, one. That's true. Second row, zero, arrow, zero. That's true. Third row, zero, arrow, one. That's true. Fourth row, zero, arrow, zero. It's true. Ah, great. We're finished here. We have found that the entire well-formed formula here in this column is a tautology. It's all ones. Therefore, we know that this is a valid argument. We know that when we have uh, pre premise number one and we have premise number two, what we get is the conclusion. So no matter what the assignment for alpha and alpha arrow beta is, we get beta out of it. So it's a valid argument because we have those two entailing the third. And as a reminder, how did we get here? Well, we took a look at our argument at the top. So we take our premises, we put ands between all the premises, we take our conclusion, we put an arrow before it. Don't worry, we have a, another example here. So let's show that the following is valid. A arrow B, not B arrow not A, B, therefore we have B or not A. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. So what I need to do, and I'll put on some lines for this so it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, we have alpha, or sorry, we have A arrow B, that's premise number one. We take an and, we add our next one. Not B arrow not A. Okay, we're going to take an and, we'll add our next premise. B. Okay, now we're going to put an arrow before our conclusion, which is B or not A. Okay, so this is what we have to show is a tautology and we need to show this on our main connective here so this column under the arrow should be a tautology now what i'm going to do is i'm going to so i'm going to move over this argument a little bit just so that way we have some more space to work with this truth table so let's move this up a little bit and let's start our truth table so A will be 1100, zero, zero. B will be 1010. Zero, zero. So I'm going to set up the A's and the B's right now. And hopefully these all align nicely. Okay, now let's fill in our zeros for our truth table. Okay, so we have our truth table set up. Now we're going to have to do this uh, piece by piece. So we'll start with A arrow B. This is our simple 1011 one, one truth table that we did on the previous example. Uh, not B, this will flip the values of B. So in this case, so 1010 zero, zero will become 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. Okay, it'll be the same thing with not A here. So 1100 zero, zero will become 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Okay, is there any more negations we can do in our truth table? Uh, yes, not A over on the right here. So 1100 zero, zero will become 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Okay, so we've done our negations. Uh, what do we have left? Well, let's do not B arrow not A. So we're going to be looking at the not columns here, and we'll be looking for one arrow zero to make that false. In the first row, we have zero arrow zero, that's true. Second row, we have one arrow zero, that is false. Uh, third row, we have zero arrow one, that's true. And fourth row, we have one arrow one, that is true. Okay, let's now do and. So and is going to take information from our A arrow B, and it's going to take information from our not B arrow not A. So I'll just put little boxes around here. So both of those have to be true for the conjunction to be true. So we have one and one in the first row, that's true. Uh, second row, we have zero, zero. So that's going to give us zero. And then the third and fourth rows, we have one and one. That gives us some ones here. Okay, so that one is now done. What do we have next? Oh, we have this and right here. So this gets information from B, and it gets information from our and column here. So remember, it's going to be true when both of those are true. So I need to make this box a little bit thinner so I can fit that there. So we have one and one in the first row, uh, zero and zero in the second row, one and one in the third row, and one and zero 
in the fourth row. That gives us a 1010. Okay. Uh, now, we have to do B or not A. So B or not A, this is taking information from B, information from not, and just one of those things has to be true. So we have 1 or 0 in the first row, that's true. Uh, 0 or 0 in the second row, that's false. Uh, third row is 1 or 1, that's true. And fourth row is 0 or 1, so that's true. Okay, our last thing. This is the final thing we have to show. Uh, we take information from this AND here, because this represents the entirety of the antecedent. We get information from the OR here. This gives us the entirety of the consequent. And we're just looking to make sure we do not have a 1 arrow 0. So 1 arrow 1, true. 0 arrow 0, true. 1 arrow 1, true. 0 arrow 1, true. Okay, perfect. We're now done. And what have we shown? We've shown that in this column that represents the entire truth table, we have a tautology. And because we have a tautology, we know that the argument is valid. If we have premise number one, premise number two, and premise number three, we have to get the conclusion. So if we have one, 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 we have to get one. There is no way for us, using this truth table, to do one arrow zero. That is impossible. Therefore, this is valid. So that's how you prove validity using a truth table. We'll learn how to do it syntactically uh, in a few videos when we start rules of inferences and proofs. Um, but for now, hopefully you're able to do this question. So uh, try this yourself. The solution video is posted within 24 hours. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer you when I can.